Welcome back to the Giant Monster Games Advent Calendar. Today, we are doing Hunted Orb, which is one of Ted's decks that is super crazy. I absolutely love this deck. The idea of the deck is to play cards like Torpor Orb or Sundial Infinite. So both of these cards allow us to stop certain things from happening, specifically enter the battlefield kind of things, because this deck is going to capitalize on cards like Hunted Horror and Treacherous Pit Dweller, which are super value cards that have an extremely low mana cost and extremely high stats, but they have enter the battlefield triggers which are not very favorable. So if we can just prevent those enter the battlefield triggers from happening, such as with Torpor Orb making it so they just can't happen, or Sundial Infinite where we just end our turn before the actual ability can resolve, we can play a 7-7 for 2 mana and hopefully overrun our opponent. So that is what this deck is trying to do. If you want to see an entire deck deck, there is a link up in the top right hand corner, like always. And if you want to pick this deck up for MTGO, there is a link so you can just do that straight away in the description below this video. This is a really fun deck, but I haven't played it very much, so it's gonna be now me, Adrian, playing this deck and trying to remember how best to actually play it. So let's throw it over and see how that turns out. Now, this is one of those decks that were made by Ted, so <laughs> it's gonna be a little bit bumpy as I try and recall exactly what and how he played this thing best. I will say though, right off the get-go, well, there's no way we can keep a hand with no black mana in it. Uh, we can probably keep this though. This seems pretty good. We can fetch up stuff, uh, specifically some of our creatures that we want to enter the battlefield. Uh, we have Eater of Days, which is nice if we can get to late game. Sundial Infinite. Yeah, this is keepable. I think we can keep all of this. And what do we got on top of the library? It is another land. You know what? Having another land is not a bad thing. It'll get us closer to Eater of the Days. Eater of the Days is not the name of that card. So we're going to put this card on top of our library. And we won the dice roll, by the way, so we are going first. So we are waiting for our opponent to decide if they want to keep their hand. They also went down to six. Which is okay. So yeah, I mean we're going to six. Our opponent's going down to six. You know they they want to match us. They don't they don't want to feel like they have the advantage. That's that's the way this works, right? That's that's how magic is played. I believe that's how magic is played. I believe that is how it works. Okay, shipping over to our opponent's turn. Let's see if we can guess what they are playing right away. Uh, well, they're going to be playing uh, Eldrazi and Taxes, or or some kind of artifact based deck. This is my assumption. I just literally based on nothing. My assumption based on absolutely nothing. So hey, there's uh, the land we put on top. And I guess we run out Sundial of the Infinite right now. Just so we can start using it in the next turn or two. And then we... By the way. Oh, by the way. By the way. I've been clicking on this menu forever. Like, since I was a child, I've been clicking on this menu. Never once saw the fact that there was an undo word right here. Never. This is how you undo stuff. This is how you undo stuff. Did you know that? Undo is how you undo stuff. It blew my mind. Blew my mind. People, I'm like, I don't know how to do this. And people are like, undo. It's literally the first thing on the list. And I'm like, what? No, no, never. Never, it's not that. It's That's attack all creatures, right? Who would have guessed? Who would have guessed? So if we ever tap our lands, that's how we untap them. <laughs> it's using undo. And apparently you can also use control Z. Who would have guessed? Or control Z, if you're, depending on where you're, where you're from. Because, um, oh, oh it's, it's a mirror match. Uh, no, it is going to be the discard-based deck. So, our opponent is going to try and drain us off cards. So, it might be Ratlock. Could also just be, um, Ratlock is a pretty solid guess, or it could be 8-Rack. Two very valid options. Uh, yeah. Uh, we do have Victim of Night, so we can always blow this thing up. Uh, we do have Ghost Quarters in there, or not Ghost, we have, um, Doom Blades in the deck, which is not, oh, sweet! Sweet beans! Well, let's show our opponent what the true meaning of Christmas is. So, play Hunted Horror. It's cool, Hunted Horror comes into play, and our opponent's gonna get two creatures, but instead, we are literally gonna end our turn, preventing them from getting the two green centaur creature tokens, and we just get a 7-7 seven -seven on turn three. Uh, I mean, that seems reasonable. It's, I, I can get behind that, I can get behind that. That seems like a, a fairly good play. Yeah, and then uh, we'll ship it to our opponent's turn because we don't. We ended our turn. Sunday Infinite, for the record, ends your turn. So that ability, that which is on the stack, just goes away. <laughs> just goes away. We can only do this on our turn, though. That's the thing. So, and uh, you can only use it on your turn. So we can't prevent our opponent from like doing stuff, but we can definitely prevent our opponent doing from stuff on our turn. Technically, we can also just do other things like make it so certain triggers don't go off, which seems quite fun for me. <clears throat> if I'm coughing a little bit, don't uh, don't mind. I'm gonna try and clear my throat less while doing this video, because, um, yeah, because I've been clearing my throat a lot today, I don't know why. 
I have some ideas why, but I'm not 100% sure why. And this guy's also really good, but he's really better. He's good when they're, uh, when he comes out of the graveyard. So his undying ability is where you want to be triggering his, uh, your thing. And what do I think? We can blow this guy up. That is an option. We can also just play this guy, run him out. I'm scared that our opponent's going to start doing some discard stuff. So maybe, uh, let's go to combat first. We'll go to combat, swing with the 7-7. Seven, seven. Then we'll make some decisions on what we're going to do. I think putting down a 3-4 is probably a good bet. Probably. Um, the other thing is, like, Sundial Infinite is not very good with this guy. Um, Sundial uh, Torpor, Torpor Orb is better with this guy. Uh, so our opponent's going to do something. They're tapping a bunch of mana. They're paying some costs. What does our opponent decide they want to do? They're thinking of giving this guy minus 5, minus 5. Uh, I'm okay with that. But in response, we are going to... Oh, oh, this is a vampire. Cancel. Um, do we want to lose this guy? Cancel that. Do we want to lose this guy? I think the answer is no. I think we're going to just end our turn. Yeah, I think we're going to do that. Seems like a better play. Keep our guy. You and our opponent, he has to exile this thing because it gets exiled off the stack. So it doesn't even go to his graveyard. <laughs> doesn't even have an option of going to his actual uh, graveyard. So prevent our opponent from killing our stuff. Kind of like a counterspell. Soft counterspell. Mind you, we also don't get a swing in to do damage. Uh, and we can't use Victim of Night on this guy. I totally realize this is a vampire. And this kills non-vampire, non-werewolf, and non-zombie creature tokens. So we have no way of dealing with this guy in the deck, really. Not really. No real way of dealing with it. So the only downside about this is like we had two mana and we could have like played this. That's, it would have been nice, would have been nice to get this guy into play, but it didn't happen. That uh, looks like we're going to be going to our turn. Going to our, I'm surprised our opponent didn't swing in. It seems like the perfect opportunity for our opponent to swing in and do some damage to us, but it's not the way it went. And I guess we, let's do this, let's throw on this guy. Put this guy into play. Uh, nice thing about this thing is when he comes out of the graveyard, so if he has dying, he can like come out of the graveyard, it's always fun. And now... Let's go to combat. Ooh, what is our opponent deciding he wants to do now? Target creature. Um, sure. Okay. And this guy comes out with Undying. So, when he comes... How do I do this? Do I let it come back? And then... So I think it comes back, and then when it's coming back is the trigger. Again, I did not play this deck. This is Ted's deck. So I'm trying to remember, like, do I have to end my turn on the Undying step? No, it's the return. There's a second trigger. Oh, yeah, because the text box is separated into two things. Now is where we actually end our turn. Unfortunately, it doesn't mean we get attacking with the 7-7. Seven, seven. Unfortunate, our opponent had to waste a spell. Mind you, we have a 5-4 now, <laughs> so um, that's a thing. Because he still gets the 1-1 one, one counter, which is nice. Super nice. So basically, we get the 5-4. He should have done that on his, his turn, actually, what he should have done. Bile Blight on his turn, so this guy does that thing. And then we don't have a way of countering it, so that's the thing. It didn't happen, though. Plays another Asylum Visitor. So our opponent is going for... So Asylum Visitor is, at the beginning of each player's upkeep, if that player has no cards in hand, you get to draw cards. So our opponent's trying to dump their hand. That's what they're trying to do. So they're going to try and get extra draw value. So this is kind of like a worse version of Dark Confidant. Very worse version, version actually, because you need to have no cards in hand, or your opponent has to have no cards in hand. So that's the thing. <laughs> it's uh, not the, not the most effective. And then going to our turn, we draw another swamp. Now we can't actually play Eater of Days, by the way, because we need to not have it enter the battlefield and do its thing. But I think we can just go to combat. I think what's what we do? We go to combat. See if our opponent has more removal. They may have more removal. Attack with all creatures. I mean, that's uh, staring down the barrel of a shotgun right there. So, what does opponent decide he wants to do? I mean, that's a lot of damage. He could chump block. May not be the best bet for him. Uh, we can also transmute up for more stuff, but we'll probably actually play another, another Pit Dweller. Because we have him, so why not? We're going to see. Actually, this deck, by the way. By the way, um, oh, oh no, he's going to double jump block. Sure, I'm okay with that, uh, and that can be split that way. 
Um, yeah, this deck is actually one of those decks that's been hemming and hawing on redoing uh, because there's a couple white cards in the last couple sets that have come out that work really well in this deck. So it's kind of the idea of like, hey, we can actually uh, make this set, uh, make this uh, deck pretty awesome. So make it so it's a little bit better because Sundial Infinite is awesome, but there's like Torpor Orb is just hands down better. So you would actually run probably less Sundial to the Infinite and more of this other creature. It's a white creature. I can't remember the name of it, to be honest. But it's a white creature. Uh, I think it's a 2-1 for 1, or 2-1 for 2. And it um, basically, uh, enter the battlefield triggers, don't trigger, is what it does. So it becomes a creature as well, so you can swing in and do stuff with it. You can do other things and just have to sit on it. So it should be it should be interesting. Uh, again, I haven't really started on that, but a lot of people have pointed out, hey, you should try this, you should try this, you should try this. There's also a bunch of good white creatures that when they enter the battlefield they do stuff that's not really beneficial so we'd be looking at putting those guys in as well and what is going on our opponent is going to return target black creature from your graveyard on their step so there's not really much we can do about that um if we had oh never mind sure we can we can totally do stuff we can get all rid of all these guys so we're going to exile up to four target cards from your opponent's graveyard that's going to be all for all three of those guys. So, uh, sorry opponent, <laughs> but you don't get to keep your graveyard. I'm okay with making stuff go away. Because I'm not a nice person when I'm playing a deck that is all about control. So, our opponent <laughs> has no targets. Sorry, dude. Sorry. Sorry about that. And I guess going to, I mean, he has a lot of land. He's kind of been land flooded, which is unfortunate. Never want to see someone get land flooded. It's never fun. And... I guess we just go to combat. We just go and attack with all creatures. Attack with all, and then ship it to our opponent's turn. Theoretically, we could Victim of Night this guy, and then Sundial of the Infinite, Sundial of the Infinite and make him a 5-4. I don't think that's really worth it. <laughs> just saying it is a possibility. We're going to pull out Doom Blades, by the way. When we go to sideboard, Doom Blades are coming out. This is the most not useful card. We're playing as a mono black deck here. Going to sideboard, our opponent decides to scoop it up, GG opponent, and, well, things that need to come out, Doom Blades, you're just no good. No good in this matchup. Uh, spell Bombs seem like they're pretty good. They can come in. Uh, Extirpate also could be good, but I think Spell Bombs are better because we get to draw a card. Uh, Wrench Mind is okay. Okay, I guess. Uh, makes our opponent discard two cards, but they have a lot of, like, not having cards in hand seems like a good thing. I think that's literally what we're going to do. I don't... There's a lot of stuff here that could be okay. Like, extra pay could be okay. Memoricide could be okay. Killing Wave, not good. <laughs> um, I think I think that's what it is. So we're just going to throw in the Spell Bombs and run her back the same way. We saw some other stuff in their deck, uh, theoretically, that keeping the... Uh, where are they? Victim of Knights? We're going to keep them in. Because there may be other creatures, which I'm assuming there's other creatures in his deck, which have that better value that are not vampires or zombies so we're gonna keep them in as a backup plan and now we're just waiting for our opponent and our opponent is back and they have decided to keep their opening hand i am thinking we're gonna keep this opening hand we can duress our opponent right away sudden spoilings is nice not the most amazing thing for us and Vict uh, victim of night is not amazing but again having torpor orb and it's, it's good it's a good opening hand it's not an amazing opening hand but we are going to keep it we're on the draw so we have an extra draw that we're going to get so that's going to be nice as well so first turn is going to be duress play one duress swamp duress it's like a pretty like standard play like for budget decks duress seem to be seems to work pretty well uh, obviously if you're playing the non-budget version this is like inquisition or thoughtseize which is just hands down better <laughs> so why not so, I'm actually really surprised our opponent doesn't have Thought Seize or Inquisition, or at least I didn't see either of them, or Duress for that matter. And Double Torpor, that's, uh, that's unfortunate. That's, uh, that is unfortunate. Uh, we don't want three of these. This is, like, this is not good anymore. But, it is the way the game goes sometimes. Sometimes, that is how the cookie crumbles. So, targeting our opponent, see what they have in their hand. Let's take a look and make a decision on what we need to get rid of. We have a single target. Oh, that's interesting. So, Gatekeeper, make a sack creatures. Pack rat discarding cards is really good. Uh, okay. Well, I guess we're going to get rid of this guy. So I'm kind of surprised he's playing right at consumption. This doesn't seem like the best. I guess even if he has a bunch of pack rats, he's doing like the pack rat thing. Just fill up his graveyard with pack rats. Or fill up his... his, um, his uh, bleh, fill up the battlefield with pack rats. And then right of consumption, just any one of them. And bam, you do a whole bunch of damage to your opponent, potentially. Yeah, that could, it's decent. Because it's, it's sacrifice a creature. Yeah, just a little cost sacrifice a creature. 
So, yeah, neat. So there comes Packrat. Uh, Victim of Night is good against Packrat, so we may... I think we're gonna have to kill Packrat right now. We can't let him go to turn three, where he's gonna be able to play that. So we're gonna have to kill Packrat on our turn, so no Torpor, no Torpor Orb, or Sundial Infinite. It's going to be Packing of Ratting. Um, the other thing is we also have Sudden Spoilings, which is nice. Oh, Haunted Horror. Oh, or Hunted. Hunted Horror. And, I mean, we do have technically this guy. Uh, but I think we're going to have to go this way. We can't have our opponent creating a million rats. That's just not... That's not the way that works. That is not going to be okay for us. That is how we lose the game, is by letting our opponent create a ton of pack rats. Pack rats, by themselves, can just win games. I have uh, definitely seen, especially when I played Standard, because I played Standard during Return to Ravnica block, so it was Return to Ravnica um, and then Theros block combined. And that's when I played Standard, and there was games, like games I played, where Packrat just won the game by itself. I was playing like a Gary Gra Graveyard base deck, and Packrat being like just, hey, I can throw away creatures, I can throw away whatever I want. Mmm, Ratchet Bomb. That's a problem. That is a problem. Uh, looks like we're going to have to hold up uh, Torpor Orb, probably. And, yeah. We're gonna have to play slow now, guys. We're gonna have to play slow. Just because we can't let our opponent wipe everything that we're trying to do. So, huh. Uh, Torpor Orb, it definitely comes in. Uh, and then, or Torpor Orb, Torpor Orb. <laughs> Such a hard word to say, Torpor Orb. It's very, very weird in my mouth. Um, works really well with this guy, because as long as it's in play, bing, 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 this guy doesn't get undying, or this guy doesn't, uh, go back to our opponent, which is nice. Very, very nice. And the nice thing is, uh, Undying actually is triggered off of your creature dying, not off entering the battlefield. So it still gets a 1-1 counter, which is super fun. So going to our turn, or going to our opponent's turn, and then we'll go to our turn after that. And we'll see what we got planned. Uh, again, he's probably going to crack up, crank up Ratchet Bomb. So basically next turn, he'll probably try and dump uh, Torpor Orb. Torpor Orb? <coughs> the Torpor Orb. Very hard for me to say. Especially when my lungs are full of phlegm, because I, uh... <laughs> why? I don't know why. Um, maybe because I slept funny? I'm gonna say I slept funny. Ooh, shock land. Uh, does it shock? Yeah, add one thing. This also sacrifice all lands you control, create a legendary 5-5 demon spirit creature token for each fly, and, uh, with, no, neat. That's, that's, I don't know if I like that. I don't know if I like that. Uh, Gatekeeper Malakar for without value, that's sad. Should've waited until we played this guy, dude. Should've waited. Oh, I guess it actually... Uh, it does nothing. Torpor Orb literally kills Gatekeeper Malakar. <laughs> uh, poor dude. Poor dude indeed. And I think we're just gonna throw down the Pit Dweller. See if our opponent wants to actually scoop our board yet. Because if he does, then we're gonna play another Torpor Orb and another Hunted Horror. And uh, keep going. Because Ratchet Bomb is a thing that we can play around. Right now, at least. We have the ability. Having extra mana would be nice as well, I'm not going to lie. Being able to play like one thing a turn it isn't very fun, but for now, for now it's going to be okay. It's not the end of the world. Okay. And going to our opponent's turn, I have a hunch they'll probably, he'll probably swing in with Gatekeeper and then crack Ratchet Bomb potentially. Potentially? We're going to find out. Torpor, Torpor Orb, by the way, it's for anyone that's wondering, Torpor Orb is like a super old school card that you used to see like in every side deck, or sideboard. It was like this like crazy, oh he's doing it right away. Good. Good for us. Um, you used to see Torpor Orb in like all kinds of sideboards all the time. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> Our opponent's gonna get this guy. Uh, that's funny. Bad, but funny. <laughs> no, it's not good for us. Um, I think we're not the victim of night that guy now. <laughs> we can't deal with it. We can't deal with them. So our opponent's gonna have a 5-4, which is okay. It's not the end of the world. <laughs> that's super funny. Again, this is a janky deck. The deck is designed to be a little bit janky, and that's how we um, we play this game. Because we just want to play like a 7-7 for two. Like that seems, seems logical, reasonable, acceptable in the game of magic. And, ooh, Ghost Quarter. Exciting. I mean, for our opponent, yeah, ghost quartering our stuff is not a ter terrible idea. So we'll go and fetch up um, a swamp. I mean, it makes us so we're less likely to draw swamps. Um, I mean, our opponent is probably going to be gaining like a 2% advantage if we are wanting to draw into more lands, which, in theory, we do. Having more land would be nice right now. 
And there is the Asylum Wanderer, which means he's going to draw cards now. Which is good for him, not very good for us. I think we kind of have to just Victim of Night this guy. As much as I would love not to, I think we have to. Yeah. And he doesn't have any cards in hand, so he's not going to be able to get... Uh, if he had... What's it called? Uh, if he had a Rite of Consumption in hand, bam, sacking this guy for five would be fantastic for our opponent right now. Not something he's planning on doing, or he's planned, mind you, but anyway, something that can definitely happen. Yes. Okay. Sudden Spoiling. So you're an interesting card. I guess there's a lot of... Um, like, there's a lot of big decks out there that just like, like goblins. Using this against a goblins deck will definitely save you on turn 3, turn 4. And our opponent gets to draw an extra card off that, which is nice for them. Not so nice for us. But I mean, it's not really bad for us either. I mean, our opponent's getting advantage. That's all that's really happening. And so I guess we start going on our next plan. Torpor Orb, and followed up with Hunted Horror. Double Hunted Horror. More land would be nice. Again, our opponent, as I said, probably had a 2% it's a chance now that we're 2% less likely to draw uh, land at this point. And there's a pack rat. Ooh. Pack rat is actually really bad for us, I'm not gonna lie. Not going to lie at all. And opponent swings in for three. Good call on our opponent's part. Uh, well, obviously we have nothing to deal. We have no, we have no way of nothing to do. We have nothing to do. We should just, I should be skipping through my opponent's turn right now. And pack rat starting next turn is gonna become a big problem. Hey, another land. That's always nice. So I think we need to throw down the torpor orb now. And then ship it to our opponent's turn. I'm okay with our opponent doing this. I just got, this card just doesn't seem good. He has to sack all his lands. So he has no lands. And then he creates a 5-5 five, five flyer. That doesn't seem good. If he created a 5-5 five, five flyer for each land sacrificed, sure. But it just doesn't, it doesn't, I don't know. I don't think this is very good. I'm not going to lie, guys. Not very good. I guess if he uses this and then can write, write a consumption it, sure. Uh, but it just it doesn't seem good. It does not seem worth it to me. Ooh. Ooh. Avatar of Discord. So when it enters the battlefield, sacrifice it unless you discard two cards. That's exciting. We have this in the in our deck as well, by the way. Because <laughs> um, it's a 5-3, and we don't have to sacrifice. Oh, for our opponent, this is fantastic. Oh my god, I just realized how amazing this is also for our opponent. He probably has it because he wants to discard stuff to make sure he's getting extra cards. Huh. Interesting. Very interesting. And he's going to call from the grave, uh, well, we, I um, mean, I don't have any response to that, so sure, you can call from grave stuff. Uh-oh, danger town for us. I'm actually really surprised our opponent did that. Oh, and I guess he had, because he would, he wanted to call from the grave, so he has zero cards in hand, but unfortunately, call from the grave puts a card back in your hand, so it's kind of counterproductive. <laughs> so that's the thing. And going to our turn, opponent swings for three, nothing we can do about that. Swings for four, actually. Pack rat, you are a thing. Going to our turn. Drawing a second land is going to be, would be really handy. Would it be really handy? It'd be sort of handy. Because we have... Hmm. Because we have a Ghost Quarter, we actually need Black Black. So, yeah, that's a thing. That's a thing, I guess. And we get the Pit Dweller. I think we play Hunted Horror. Again, comes into play. Our opponent does not get the Centaurs. But we get a 7-7. We get a 7-7 seven, 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 seven Trampler. Which is really nice. And, and then I think we ship it to our opponent and see if they want to deal with us from now on. Let's see. Let's see what our opponent's got. What does our opponent got? Now, I mean, like, he can, whatever he swings in with, we can just super block whatever. And then we're, oh, we're going to attack in as well. So we can't swing in with this 3-1 so much anymore. Oh, it does, like, what? How does he also have Hunted Horror? No, he has Pack Rat with a Hunted Horror image in it because... For whatever reason, Empty Geo, my Empty Geo specifically, is silly. Very, very silly. The other thing we can do as well is uh, next turn or the turn after, we can just hold up sudden spoilings. Boop, turn everything into two or zero twos. Swing in for some serious damage or block and kill a whole bunch of things. If he attacks him with pack rats, we're going to have to block. I don't think he's going to swing in though. No, he's not. He's going to try and build up his board. Building up his board. Hey, there's another swamp. That's always nice. And here's the question. I think the, the answer... I think the answer is we attack in, and then we, if he like wants a triple block, or double block really, we sudden spoilings now and get rid of two of his things. That might be a good play. Maybe. We're going to find out. We're going to find out. So go to combat, attacking with this guy. 
see if our opponent wants to do anything. Let's see what he wants to do. This is what the plan is. The other thing is, again, we can play either of these guys next turn. And the verdict is no blocks. Any blocks from our opponent? No blocks from our opponent. Interesting. So I guess we play another another hunted horror. And I'm actually really tempted to also play the, the Pit Dweller. Like, really tempted to play the Pit Dweller. I think we're going to do it. Why not? Sacrifice it. Get a land. Get a Swamp, because that's what we need. A uh, nice thing about Ghost Quarter, again, Ghost Quarter, the land comes in untapped, so you can use it if you need to fix your mana a little bit. Not the end of the world. Play the Pit Dweller. Also, doesn't come into play. Get, so we don't, don't, don't get any value off of it yet. It's, uh, yeah. <laughs> There you go, opponent. What do you think of our uh, our board state now? Looking down two seven sevens and a four three seems like a scary thing, if you ask me. Especially seeing how next turn we are going to sudden spoiling our opponent's board when we swing in. So I think we actually have our opponent next turn. Pretty sure. We'll see what he does. If he creates another couple pack rats, then we might be in trouble. Uh, it depends on what else he plays as well, but we should be fine. Should be fine. Grave Merchant of Asphodel. Ooh. That's about it's the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Ooh, very nice. The thing is, it doesn't trigger. <laughs> Torpor Orb, you save us again. Thank you, Torpor Orb. It didn't so normally when Grave uh, Grey uh, Merchant of Asphodel comes into play, you their opponent loses X life uh, and you gain X life equal to your devotion. Uh, which is number of black symbols you have, and our opponent scoops it. Opponent Torpor Orbed into Saltland. Well, this has been the Hunted Orb deck. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Until next time, my name's Adrian, this is Giant Monster Games, and don't forget to game like a giant monster. Thanks for watching the Giant Monster Games Advent Calendar. Don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe if you like this video and want to see more videos just like it. A huge shout out to all of the Patreon supporters. You guys are helping make videos like this. And if you want to pick this deck up, there is a link below with an affiliate link so you can grab this entire deck on MTGO.